as we get into this one. But with Callista banned first, it's looking pretty similar. Yeah, Callista, Cogmore, and get rid of the Zerath. That's pretty much the recipe to try and take Snake out. Throw in a Victor pick if you really want to shut them down. Xiaohu has shown that he can play in it, but Sejuani being taken off the map, yeah, that's a power pick right now. It is just so strong. Yeah, and it's not targeted necessarily at Huey, who hasn't been playing it at all. But of course, moving to 5.6, it is all about these powerful tanky junglers that are coming through. So pretty standard. The Lulu going to be taken away. Of course, Barker has been playing that one a bit. And this is just going to take away that Juggermore comp potential. Yeah, exactly right. Not allowing them to run the Protect the AD carry. I honestly don't think Snake would have run it anyway, um, just because of the fact that they need to get something else on this 5.6. And you see Nautilus also being taken away. They're just hitting the Mega Tanks. Yeah, the Mega Tanks and Nautilus has been seeing a whole lot of play in that support role as well. Sort of erupted onto the support scene, sort of like Viger did a uh, few patches past. So, look, we'll see why in case it gets uh, banned in the next... It doesn't get banned in the next game. And Flandre, he's going to lose the Maokai here as well. Has played a heck of a lot of that champion. And we'll see whether Flandre is going to decide to change things up in that top lane. Yeah, we'll have to see what he decides to run. Of course, has gone Might to the, be the Mundo. Mundo. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised at all, although he also played Morgana a little bit up there as well. Um, that Black Shield is just such a powerful tool if you are trying to protect the likes of Barker and Crystal. And We'll see what the... It's a Xerath ban what? from Snake. Yeah, well, of course, we do have the numbers one and two Xerath players in Jauhu and Barker here, of course. That is a very contested pick. And they don't even want to let that go as a first possible pickup option. Yeah, so if anyone knows the strength of it, it will be Snake because they use it so well in their compositions. Nunu has escaped, Jarvan's still available, so... And Rek'Sai as well. Yeah, Rek'Sai's still up, so you have to think Huey and Beast probably not that anxious to lock in a jungle pick here. And it will actually be the Janna being picked away from Ella. Thresh still available. Sync Dream looking to go... No, they swap it up. It's going to be Rexa. Yeah, Rexa makes a whole lot of sense here. Of course, Huey's fantastic on that champion, but take it away from Beast as well. I mean, the, la one, the last victory that they had was actually with Beast on that Rexa and looked very, very strong doing it. We'll see what Snake decide to answer with two power picks to come through potentially now. And Ella, pretty content to go with that Thresh. Yeah, definitely like the Thresh pick up here. We've just seen how dominating it can be in the bottom lane. Zero played it to great effect and... Just in pick comp, still run, runs king, and there's the Gragas. There's the Gragas. Prophet spawn here, letting us know exactly what might be picked up, and it is going to be the Gragas potentially in the jungle. Could go anywhere, who knows? But I have a feeling that that's going to be the old jungle Gragas coming through, and Fizz is the hover. Xiaohu just going to lock away that LeBlanc, though, no questions asked. Yeah, just looking for the assassin in the mid lane. They've gotten rid of a couple of champions for Baka Baka, doing one himself there with the Zerath, so going extremely aggressive. I really like this tactic. Also picking up a more Ghana. We don't know whether that's top lane or support, but gets rid of one of Flandre's champions and a lot of work being done by that Black Shield. Yeah, and they will be able to run a poten potential protect the hyper carry comp here as well around tail if he wants to get back on that Cogmore, which he has been playing a little bit recently. Snake now able to round out their lineup just a little bit and Crystal... Showing us some interesting AD carry options. We'll see what he does decide to go with. Actually, Twitch having a slight buff here as well to his poison damage in the early stages of the game will be interesting. Barker's going to lock in the Azir, and that's a Draven as well spawn. This is going to be an interesting game. It certainly is. So Azir got some range back on his Q. Yeah. Didn't get the spawning of the soldiers back up to its old distance, but did get a slight buff. Um, so... I'm not surprised to see him go back to it, although I am surprised to see him take it into an assassin lane because that's going to be an absolute nightmare during the laning phase to try and get a LeBlanc off you. Oh, yeah, and the Hecarim has been left open here for Letmia as well. A lot of comfort picks to come through. Xiaohu has looked very comfortable on the LeBlanc. Tail has the option of going for the Corky if he wants to, and Letmia on the horse is going to be more than happy up there. And I like the move over to the Graves because that's so much pick potential, even just 2v2 in the bottom lane. Yeah, it certainly is. You throw in the fact that if any of the Dark Binds land, it's just going to complete, be complete lights out for Crystal on Draven. He has got some peel coming through from Ala. Of course, we haven't seen whether that will be an Ignite or an Exhaust picked up by the support yet. But in the top lane, let me hasn't swapped over his summoner spells yet, so might see a little bit more of a standard. Oh my goodness. Not sure what's going to be happening here. 
But Flandre thinking about a Shivana, but what I'm actually curious about is his summoner spell choices at the moment. Yeah, he's got a smite in there, so <laughs> see whether he wants to do any counter jungling maybe early, of course, the smite. But if you think about it, Cinder Hulk is a fantastic item. You can only build it if you have smite. And the fact that you get 25% extra health and then your dragon form gives you so many resistances, that uh, dragon is going to be so difficult to kill in the middle of a team fight. Yeah, and I'm also going to throw in the fact that Skirmisher's Saber is probably the best late game item at the moment. Purely mm -hmm. because it gives you a percentage damage reduction, which is just ridiculous at this point in the game with very little threats. If you're only going to run a one or two threat combo coming out, it is just such a good pickup. Yeah, and so this is the first time that we've seen Shivana in the LPL this season. We'll see how it goes against the Horse Dragon versus Horse, a very exciting matchup. Gragas against the very standard Rek'Sai there in the jungle here, and we'll see whether, you know, Beast mixing up his champion pool is going to work out. And Barker... Back to an old comfort pick. Yeah, so back on the Azir. Let's see if he can make it work. Xiaohu, no slouch in the mid lane. So this is a fantastic test. Yeah, and speaking of fantastic, Crystal's Draven back onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen, against Graves here as well. A massive manly battle there on the bottom lane as Sync Dream, he's got some pick potential in the early game. So he can use that Morgana to move around the map and possibly get some cheeky Dark Bindings. Yeah, so need to see how Sync Dream performs on this one, but... This is going to be insane, Atlas. I love the fact that Snake, we said they have to do something different. They've put out a double smite composition in their first game. Yeah, and it's sort of like half the team is doing things different. I mean, you've got the jungle Gragas and the Shivana coming through. What the heck's going on there? But then you've got Azir back to complete comfort for Barker and the Draven as well from Crystal. Let's get onto the Rift and see how it works. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, onto the rift for Gamti taking on Snake, our second game of the day here for week 10, day two. And we'll see whether Gamti can withstand the onslaught of the Smite Teleport Shivana. Yeah, exactly. The power pick at the moment, you know, you just see it. No, it's pretty <laughs> rare. But has gone a Ruby Crystal early, and they must know some shenanigans are going on because if you run a double Smite, Shivana can take all kinds of buffs early. It'll look pretty... Standard five-man stack coming through here. They're just looking for the deep wards that we've seen so much. And But look at what Snake have done. They've got so much early vision around their blue buff here to start off with. Of course, they've managed to scout out the potential lane swap, but they can also see the enemy team moving through their jungle. Yeah, they've been able to pick up complete vision of everything. So they've rotated their Draven into the 2v1 lane. So they're going to look to start off with some counter jungling. Flandre with that smite going to be able to pick up the quickest camp pro possible because Shivana smite, that's just counter jungling written all over it. Yeah, Shivana smite plus beast Gragas smite. I mean, how's uh, the old Gragas clear? Uh, Gragas' is clear is fantastic. His W is such a strong move in the jungle. We'll see how quickly he can run through the big camps especially. And Flandre, he's going to start himself off a Gromp, give the blue buff over and then... See if they do set up any form of well, double this, jungle. This could also be the Moscow 5 strategy as well, where Flandre just teleports to the blue buff afterwards and takes that one down as well. Of course, he has fallen very, very low, but that is an opportunity here. Yeah, it certainly is. And we see that Hecarim has had to go into his jungle because they see that it is a 2v1 lane. So he didn't have the advantage of taking a camp because he actually recalled and tried to work to walk to lane. And in the mid lane, Azir, not a champion we've seen grow in popularity after the nerf came through. Xiaohu trying to get aggressive, but there you see the extended range on that Q. Does mean that he has a little bit of an easier time, but I'm still not convinced. Yeah, we'll see whether it does work out. Of course, in the hands of Barker, always been a fantastic Azir player. We've seen it work out for them very, very well. It was part of the reason why there was such a dominant force at the early stages here at the LPL, but it looks like Gamti, they are going to avoid getting triple buffed by double smite snake and that is a big deal. Yeah, it certainly is. And we see that Flandre's actually pulled out that Gromp needs to be careful here that he doesn't get collapsed on it. A he lot of members in his... <laughs> that is such a weird thing to say about a top <laughs> Yes, indeed. Actually, or is going to be able to get it. The cheeky smite over the wall, and that's going to be a whole lot of extra experience. Already halfway to level three here as well as Let Me. Nowhere near that mark. He's getting zoned away from this tower, though, as Gamti. They've decided to hard push this lane. 
Well, they just had four members down there, so they can kill all the experience. There's no way that Slandre can approach that. So probably going back to grab his wolves at this point. Surprised he didn't start Machete, simply for the fact that he would have got some extra gold off his smart. Yeah, true. true. But it looks like they are going for a 2v2 here. Beast has got him. Yeah, Beast has actually found his way over here. Does manage to land the barrel. Tail's going to get slowed down, but Sync Dream in a whole lot of trouble now. The flash out, the heal baited as well. That is two very important summoner spells, and Huey has to be careful now as well. More importantly, they were able to grab the double wave that was on the turret because they withdrew too many members <laughs> too early on the side. So Flandre, he gets a level three. Meanwhile, Hecarim's only just gone into the top lane. He's got zero CS, and there's no way he can go near Draven. No, there's no way you can go near Draven or Thresh. Barker actually taking a whole lot of damage here as the exhaust comes through onto Xiaohu. He's not going to use any spells, though. Barker going to have to chug some potions. Going to have to be very, very careful in this lane. And you can see Xiaohu, this was his breakout champion. I mean, we know that he played a lot of Xerath, but also got a lot of the success for Gamti early on on that LeBlanc. Yeah, he certainly did, and he's just so potent on it. Being able to dive in there in the 1v1 and not have to expend the Ignite to get the exhaust baited out yeah. is absolutely huge. It means there's a lot of kill potential. So straight away, you see Jungler comes in, helps Barker push out the lane, going to get a free shop in. Yeah, and he's only down a couple of CS here as well after a whole lot of pressure was put on him there. So didn't expel the flash, did only use that exhaust in that trade. So already has that very necessary escape summoner here for the early stages of the game. But is he, he's pretty slippery himself with that E. Yeah, he certainly is. And we see, once again, Flandre repetitively going to this jungle for experience. Makes me question not picking up the Hunter's Machete even more because, look, it's... Ruby Crystal, great item because it just builds into so many things. Noticeably, this, uh, the new Cinder Hulk item coming through there. Um, but going to be able to, I guess, not get all the extra gold that he would have been able to out of the Hunter's Machete. And also, he's being zoned fairly heavily still. He is a Shyvana. Melee can't really push up and walk up and push out that uh, wave as easily as he would like. And getting a lot of attention is uh, Flandre in this lane. And actually, Huey, not in vision of that ward, is finally going to come through. Of course, the ward about to die here, and Flandre very, very lucky that that ward only just expired. And Huey didn't actually see it die there as well, which is very, very important. He's actually quite low on the old health. It's health bar not too high, and the burnout actually doing some relevant damage here to the wreck size. Beast is going to come through, and... Snake doing a great job defending this bottom out of turret. Yeah, so the fast push came through from Gamji and they're trying to, I guess, take that turret down as soon as possible with the earlier lane in the uh, graves. However, in the top lane, what that's meant is that, unfortunately, Let Me on Hecarim just has not been anywhere near CS. He's got, I think, two at this point in the game versus yep. 20. So Flandre doing a much better job being able to get some gold for himself, but team gold still going in favor of Gamji. Yeah, 700 in the lead at this stage, which is very notable. And where is that actually coming from here? Is that all in that turret in the bottom lane? Of course, that did just fall down, and I'm a little bit of an idiot. So, yeah. of course, that global gold is going to be helping out a lot, but we'll see whether this top lane out of turret is going to last too much longer because Snake have decided that they want to start pushing. Yeah, they certainly have, and they need to be careful here. They're bringing Beast into the lane and teleporting as well, but there's three members on the way. They're not going to get anything from this. Yeah, Flandre has level six, though, here, and Ella tanking up that turret. Let me taking a whole lot of damage as a Draven's Axes. The Adoration stacks come through, and he's going to be safe here as well. As Gamti, they're going to lose two underneath this turret. Yeah, so they trade the two for one, actually going much deeper than I thought they would. With the level six coming through from Flandre was a lot stronger. They proxy a whole nother wave, and Flandre with that smite going to be able to counter jungle even further. I'm going to name him the Gromp Destroyer. He's killed so many Gromps this game. Yeah, a little bit mean. Yeah, he's just a, he's a Gromp cyst, I think, something like that. Not entirely sure what the the word is going to be for it, but let me does find himself able to actually pick up some farm. This is probably his first wave since those jungle camps that he's managed to get a hold of. Yeah, but he's two levels behind. You saw that Flandre already used that ultimate halfway through his level six, only just level five, so a full level now. And Flandre sticking around, looking to get some counter jungling done, although Xiaohu does pick up his blue buff. Their neutral objective control is going to be ridiculous this game as well. What with double smite? Yeah, double smite as well as an Azir. Can't ever underestimate how much damage Azir does to the uh, neutrals as well. And 
you see that he'll just be able to push out the wave with that burnout, go take the Krugs and then come back into lane. Kind of like the Season 2 Shivana that we saw. I know, this is like Darien all over again. Of course, Shivana not seeing as much play, and I love that as soon as she gets back onto, into the game, it's the counter-jungling Shivana that happens straight away. You can see Flandre there on your screen. And, man, this Shivana's working out fantastically so far. Yeah, it certainly is. So Shivana doing a great job up in CS by double. Really is going fantastically in the gold department as well. Because remember, those jungle camps were so much more. We'll go back with 2,000 gold. I want to see what his first pickup is. Is it going to be the Cinder Hulk here? Is actually, let me, he's going to push up towards this turret. Flandre is going to stay around. Just wants to clear it with the Dragon's Descent. It's going to be absolutely fine. But let me... Be happy to pick up all of this farm here as well. And Flandre just wants to have an opportunity to back as Crystal not going to get hit by that Dark Binding. Huey's come around here though. The Descent's going to land. Tail just explodes him. And B says, okay, I guess I won't come down here. Yeah, and that's the thing about level six Graves. Just so much upfront damage. He's gone the raw AD build has gone for the BF Sword as well as the pickaxe. And it is that's the, the skirmish skirmish saver. saver Cinder Hulk picked up there. It's going to be a very dangerous Shivana to deal with. Oh, yeah, just going to be burning everything here as well. And it's not just the fact that it gives you that 25% extra health. The split push clear is going to be huge. Beautiful E from Barker. Did that actually stop the damage of the Mimic Distortion? Yeah, I think it actually did there. And that's a very good interaction coming through. Fantastic reflex. And gives him a little bit of a shield as well to stop some of the damage. So. He looks okay in this lane. He's 14 CS behind, but we'll take that if he has to. And now we'll see that all the extra gold will come through from the likes of the Scuttle Crab. Oh my goodness. He's just going to be a farming machine. There is no way anyone will be able to stop him. This is a 60 CS Shivana in a lane swap situation in comparison to 32, though. This is insane. And it looks like, let me, he's gone for that Phage. And if that turns into a Sheen as well, this Trinity Force is going to be far too late. Yeah, it's a very late Trinity Force coming through there. Has to be able to get a good team fight, you feel, around Dragon or something like that. And Flandre, he's just going to take a wave, run into his jungle, take a camp. Take a wave, run into the enemy jungle, grab a camp, see if he can find Huey, try and kill him on the way out. It's going to be extremely difficult to be able to deal with this top laner. And one thing I do want to add is that Smite gives you so many cool particles at the moment that he's just <laughs> going to have a ball doing it. Look at his fist always glowing as he runs around with that Krug buff. Yep. We'll see the true damage poison coming off him whenever he gets a chance at the Gromp now. It's just so much fun playing Shivana right now. Yeah, it's true. And I'm going to be very, very upset looking at sh a solo queue after this because, of course, you can imagine there might be a few teleport smite Shivanas around. And you see the deep vision coming through just to help him out with this play style. Also picked up some boots as well as that burnout, so he's very quick in and out of the jungle. And what's that meant? A two-level advantage for this top lane. Yeah, and he just doesn't care. He's just clearing out waves. Again, Barker nullifying the damage. Beast wants to come around. Explosive cask. But Xiaohu dodges out of the way with a flash. And that ultimate is not on a high cooldown. And now you can see a lot of extra harass coming through from Barker. Flandre getting frustrated at Let Me here, who thinks that he can actually stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in this lane. And Flandre letting him know that that is not the case. Yeah, certainly is, and trying to bully him out a little bit here, of course. The one thing that Flandre will do is give up a lot of CS because he's repetitively pushing the lane, but because he had such a big advantage at the start, means the dive is definitely on as they take out the turret, actually. And that's just more access to the Gromp here as well. That's probably what Flandre's thinking. Yeah, I definitely agree. And deep vision going down here from his jungler, trying to get him a little bit more support. Is taking some damage, but he would be sitting on a truckload of gold. Once again, goes to kill another Gromp. Oh man, these poor Gromps. There's not going to be any left. They're going to stop spawning, I think, here very soon because Flandre has been taking them from every corner of the map. Now going to back off. We'll see what he decides to pick up. Whether he's going to go for a health item first up, whether he's going to potentially go for a possible damage heavy build. He might pick up a, a build water cutlass here, but it is going to be the Warden's Mail and has those Ninja Tabi as well as Snake actually looking to try and take down. That's stolen away by Huey here as well as he's going to go down very, very low. Whirling Death going to almost secure that kill. Beast gets it. A Xiaohu taking damage from this Draven here as well. Tail, massive collateral damage, and Crystal has to be very careful. Let me picks up that kill as the explosive cast.
a little bit too late. Flandre gets Jahu, but Lemmy gets caught by the death sentence. And Barker still at full health, doesn't have a whole lot of mana, but Flandre is here, skirmishes Saber, and breathes fire on the horse for a kill. But that is a one for three. Dragon, though, goes to Ganty. Yeah, but the problem is, is that Crystal, before he died, was able to pick up a kill, and he's been able to get that one in his back pocket. So he got some gold before he went down. Across the board, Flandre 3 0 and 1 after that is going to be an absolute monster. Yeah, one could say that he is a huge dragon as he's going to steal away a blue buff here as well. Ella giving him even more ability to roam around this map. He's going to be a pain. He is. He already is a pain. He's taken every grump on the map. But he's just going to get so much gold from the scuttle crab as well as the grump every single time he wants it. That extra 30 gold really can't be understated. We talk about how it's so important to leave your jungle the big uh, creep in the camp just so he can get the use of that extra gold. This yeah. Shavana, Graves, he's so short ranged, is not going to be able to go anywhere near him in team fights. Yeah, and I mean, of course, doesn't necessarily have all that much CC, but looks to be building up a Randuans pretty soon. And what with 25 extra percent health, as well as a Randuans? And now a slow on top of that. I mean, one of the things that you talk about Shivana about is the fact that they, she doesn't offer all that much CC apart from that Dragon's Descent knockback. But now, it's going to be ridiculous. And how are you supposed to kite this Shivana, who's going to be running so fast at you and has so much money? But the other thing is, Shivana does so much mixed damage in team fights. It's not only about the person that she's diving on top of. Graves might be able to get away, but the whole team has to chase through all the burnout damage yeah. that gets left behind. And if multiple people aren't peeling for <laughs> Tail in this uh, team fight, you feel that it's just not going to be enough to keep him alive as we see Crystal going a little bit aggressive, but LeBlanc is down here with Huey. Yeah, Huey coming through here as well. Dark Binding not going to find the mark. Freyseeker coming through. Actually, Beast going to use the ultimate just for funsies, but is forced to use that flash to get away. Of course, no tower there for protection. And Gamti, they don't find anything, but they get the summoner. Yeah, so they're able to get the summoner and the ultimate out. So that's a one trade as well as force out the aggressive lane, but Flandre, he's found Let Me, and that's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's the Skirmisher Saber being in use here as well. Dragon's Descent as well. He's going for the solo kill, but doesn't quite get there. Avoids the fear, but you have to think that's not too much of an avoided fear for Let Me, who was terrified of that dragon. Yeah, it certainly was, and what that's meant is that a free lane in the mid lane, because Yahoo now has to rotate across. Still a two-lane discrepancy. This is a real potential for Flandre to turn her around if he so wants to. Yeah, the chains actually do manage to land here as well. Yahoo trying to kite this one around. Sync Dream here as well. The dragon has to be pretty careful. No flash, of course. And if no dragon's descent, and it is going to be the kill being taken down by a chain there as multiple members needed in this top side, but Flandre probably doesn't mind too much because, of course, he's been up there farming that one out for so long. Well, this is exactly what he wants to do. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Bucker picks up a free wave, able to shove that one in. Crystal in the bottom lane completely unharassed because four members went yeah, across they get the deal with the bottom lane. They're completely happy to continue this as well. Good move. Yeah, actually, Barker, Emperor's Divide there as Beast comes back around here as well. The exhaust under Huey, but Barker has to be very careful. He does fall down. Huey picks up that kill. Sync Dream, of course, around here from the side as well. Huey going very, very low. The explosive cast doesn't get the kill, but the Dark Passage and Beast makes it to safety. They only lose the Azir. So they lose the Azir, and another good collapse coming through from Gamti will even up the score. But it's all about the objective control right now coming through from Snake. They're just rotating around the map. They're actually not looking for fights. They're just looking to goad Gamti into committing a lot of people. And from there, they're just taking objective after objective. Yeah, Flandre does make it back to this top side as well. That Cinder Hulk is going to easily clear out that wave with that burnout as well. I mean, if Shivana has anything, it is incredibly fast wave clear if you can actually walk up to that wave as well. So in a free lane, the split push is going to be terrifying. Almost has the teleport available as well, which means that Flandre can just spend all of his time here in a side wave, pushing it out. Crystal actually finding a massive amount of damage onto Xiaohu, and he almost has the last Whisper completed. We'll see what Crystal does decide to build as he uh, normally does go with sort of the last Whisper into the Ghost Blade afterwards and then the fourth item, Trinity Force. We'll see what he does pick up this time, though. Yeah, I definitely think that still will be the build. It just gives a lot of mid-game power to the Draven. It means that he does turn into a pseudo-tank buster as well because he can just get through all of the armor that will come out 
Trinity Force now finished up for Hecarim, so it is 18 minutes. It's not the 23 minute Trinity Force where it gets really delayed. Although, when you compare it to how well Flandre is doing on the map at the moment, 3 1 and 1, 55 CS up, and yeah, two finished items is an absolute monster, nearly onto his third, which will be probably a Banshee's Veil. Isn't where he would like to be. And Actually, just picks himself up a, a Gromp buff there as well as he donates that money over to Crystal. But if anyone is attacking this Shivana as well, it's going to be doing a whole lot of work. Flandre is huge, definitely, on this champion. 3,000 health now as well, and that is an extra third on top of Huey, who has only got about 2k at this stage, and Tail has to be very careful of this Shivana. Yeah, it certainly does. Can't really go near it. And you see all the work coming through from that Grump buff. That is what you want to be picking up on these tanky junglers. <laughs> In front of two people, he's just willing to continue to counter jungle. Yep, and uh, just smites that one away. Doesn't care about Dark Binding at all as the Dragon has potentially been started here by Snake. We'll have a look over to see it has been pulled out here as well. Huey going in for another uh, steal, but doesn't get it. Just gets knocked up here as well. Wants to try and escape, but it's going to be the explosive cask and all of the extra damage as the teleport to come through from Flandre. He gets it cancelled, actually, by the Dark Binding. Beautiful work by Sync Dream, and that might actually let Ganti pick up this tower in the top lane. That Trinity Force is going to mean that Letme has a lot of tower damage. Yeah, this is going to be three for free. That is absolutely huge for Ganti. They pick up three turrets for just a dragon. What a move, but Flandre, he's a little bit annoyed. He's going to kill them both. He's going to try to, most definitely. Still has the Dragon's Descent available, just shrugging off Tail's damage. Did only just use that Randuin's Omen, and man, this dragon is pretty frustrating for Gamty to deal with at this stage, but cancelling that teleport was a big deal. But let me, he's going to pay for it after taking down that turret, and Xiaohu has to be careful as well. Barker was looking for something, but doesn't actually follow through. Meanwhile, Flandre was picked up after all the shenanigans that were going on in that mid lane. So 3, 2, and 1, getting a little bit ahead of himself. I think he's trying to play the annoying game a little bit too frequently, has now picked up. At Spectre's Cow, so we'll be moving towards most likely a Banshee's Veil, as we mentioned. And across the board, there are some items being picked up now from the Ganty lineup. Two items for LeBlanc, two items for this Grave. It's gone the crit build, actually. Hasn't gone for the Phantom Dancer. A little bit more early damage coming out of that Static Shiv, and we see that they are still reasonably strong. Yeah, and he's also going for the burst build here as well. Of course, that guaranteed first crit of the Static Shiv is going to mean that this Graves has a lot of extra burst damage, which might just mean that Barker gets destroyed in this fight. Crystal can get bursted out here as well. Do you think that that's something that Gamty are looking at? Yeah, it certainly is a potential, especially if you have the Hecarim with that Trinity Force flying in from the side. There are some squishy targets that can be taken down, so got to respect the burst, as you said, that comes out of the Graves now. And Another BF sword actually picked what up for the Crystal. Heck, yeah, Crystal not really caring about a Last Whisper at this stage. Of course, there's only, you know, a Ninja Tabi and a couple of cloth armors. I sort of respect this idea, but we haven't seen Crystal build an Infinity Edge on Draven at all thus far. Yeah, so a little bit of a different build coming out there. And look, Infinity Edge Draven does a heck of a lot of damage if he does crit with all the AD that he is able to pick up, but. Not really known for grabbing the modifiers unless he goes for the Ghost Blade into the Trinity Force, but that leaves him without a defensive item, and that can spell some trouble if you're against the likes of LeBlanc, who's dealing very well, as well as that Graves, who has all the burst damage. Yeah, and Barker now as well, with a needlessly large rod on top of the fact that he does have that Athene's Unholy Grail. Of course, a little bit buffed is that item as well, and definitely suits an Azir very, very nicely. See whether he is going to have the impact that Barker was known for on this Azir towards the later stages of the game. Because it looks to me like, you know, the nerfs has, haven't affected him thus far this game too much. Yeah, maybe affected the laning phase, but since it's got out of the laning phase, it's played the team fights pretty well. So looking to be the Barker of old on that champion. And you have to think that if they can pull this back into the meta, that is in Snake's favor because they did play it extremely well beforehand. As we see, uh, Flandre still trying to be that annoying top laner against Let Me, although Let Me starting to pick up a lot of farm now, moving into a Randuin's Omen. Touching on Beast build, I want to see if that is going to be the Iceborne Gauntlet or whether he will just go towards a Frozen Heart. Of course, CDR terrific on Gragas, as it's probably not worthwhile at this point in the game to chase Flandre whatsoever. Yeah, Flandre just going to steal away this. Uh 
uh, Krug as well. And that is not going to be money going to tail. And an extra 90 gold for Flandre as well. I mean, that is huge. These jungle camps with the smite, very, very big deal. Flandre still in this bottom lane, still farming this one out. Still 70 CS in the lead. 75 at about this stage as Crystal going to continue getting damage down. Actually decides to finish off the last Whisper here in the end, but still has that bl that uh, BF sword just chilling out at his inventory. And you never know, he might be going for a potential Mercurial Scimitar here. Might just forego picking up that Infinity Edge. We'll see what he does get. As Descent's going to land on a Huey here as well. Does have another Black Shield, but it gets broken pretty quickly. Freyseeker going to find Beast, and we'll see whether a fight is actually going to break out here. Of course, both teams a bit hesitant to pull the trigger completely. Yeah, and just looking for position around this Dragon with only a minute until the respawn, seeing how deep they can get their vision and... Flange really once again starting to push his luck. He's in yeah. the jungle by himself. None of his team really there for backup at this point. And now will rotate around, has got the teleport available soon, so maybe send him into the top lane. Rest of the team down by the dragon, see if they can pick that one up. Yeah, and Tail, he's going to be able to clear out this top wave, but does have to be careful of dragons coming through over the wall. I believe that was Tail actually using that scrying orb there as well. A lot of vision to be cleared away from this barren area. But there is a Flandre there and a beast around the corner as well. Scuttlecrab just going to spawn here in the river, but Tail not going to push his luck by hanging around for that one. Actually is going to head back around. This could potentially be dangerous. Sync Dream hanging around here as well as Ella. Ooh, Descent's not going to find it, but it might net them the Scuttlecrab, which it does. So some extra vision around the Baron. Yeah, certainly isn't. They're looking to see if they can get position over that with the all the damage that comes through currently from Crystal as well as the W of Beast. The other thing about Azir that we have to mention is he does neutrals very quickly. They will fly through this. They've got the double smites and they've started it up. Yeah, half health already down here on this Baron. Only three men on it as Barker able to auto attack over the wall. Sync Dream does find his way in here. Only a couple of members down as Huey. He's going to make it a 50-50. It's taken by the Dragon of all characters. As actually, we're going to see it again. Lemmy comes through with the Onslaught of Shadows. Takes down Barker immediately. Flandre trying to get out as quickly as he can. Ella here as well. They want to be able to keep some of these uh, Baron buffs alive. As Crystal's going to come around. Dodges out of the way of that Dark Binding here as well. As Huey does manage to get the knock-up tail as well. Wants to try and kill the Draven, but you can't when he's got so much extra damage. He's pretty low. Avoids another Dark Binding and kites away the Rek'Sai for a double kill now as well. The cleanup is on for Snake, and it's a three for two and a Baron. Yeah, and it looked like Jahu was going on the flanking Crystal. I want to see the replay, and Crystal just deleted him off the map with some huge plays, so able to get some kills under his belt now. Four, two, and six for Crystal. And you just see why he's such a good Draven player. His target prioritization is really what sets him apart. Understood the only person that could get through all of last deal was that Graves, and he just became priority number one. Yeah, well, that was the thing. And as soon as the Dark Binding was down, he didn't respect Sync Dream at all because he didn't have to. He wasn't going to see another Dark Binding for another six or so seconds. Yeah, exactly right. So heads up play out of the AD carry. Let's take another look at it. So they go in with the double smite. There's no way you're stealing this unless you're an absolute magician if you're Huey. The push out comes through and let me dives onto the back line, actually gets some work done. But we've just said all game how tanky Flandre is. Off the backside, you can see that the box went down to try and zone out Jiahu and he just got cleaned up. Looked like those uh, spinning axes were able to stop the distortion damage. And this is what I'm talking about. Tail off the backside. Straight away, Crystal realized he's the only person that can kill him, so he runs straight for him. That's through an exhaust, all the damage coming through. From there, he can just hit whoever's closest because there's no longer any kill threat coming through for that Draven. Yeah, and he only dropped one axe in that team fight as well with all of what was going on. He's going to be able to pick up this red buff as well. I thought Flandre might have actually just drive-by smited that, but decides not to take it away from his AD carry. Of course, Flandre is 80 CS in the lead as well and is potentially looking for a Trinity Force. Yeah, so going for Trinity Force, really good pickup here because it just, I guess the Phage does so much for Shivana's kit. Not yep. to mention the act extra burst damage that will come through as soon as the Sheen's picked up. So yeah, definitely agree that it's something that can look in there. The HP, Cinder Hulk. 
definitely looking There's good. something added There's there synergy. as well. There is most definitely synergy. Oh. Jao going to take half of his health, though, as the cast not going to be enough, but Syndrome gets caught. There's the Whirling Death to take down the LeBlanc as well. And just kills Sync Dream. That was ridiculous. Yeah, the return actually took Sync Dream out as well, I think. That might actually be the game. They have Baron and a very tanky lineup with a pretty okay AD carry at this point. Yeah, this Draven is doing so much damage. You saw that was one auto attack and took off half the health of Xiaohu. That is when you get very, very scared as a game team member. Actually, Huey in a whole lot of trouble. Tail now trying to get some damage down, but Huey's gonna die. Flandre picking up that kill. 10,000 gold in the lead. Baron buff, another inhibitor turret gonna fall down. And this was Snake pulling the trigger when they knew they could. Yeah, it certainly is. And Let Me seems to have missed the memo about this base race going wrong because he's still in the bottom lane. The rest of his team's up. He's now teleporting back. Yeah, gonna teleport back. Barker gets the heck out of here. Crystal, though, doesn't really want to. He wants to keep auto-attacking people. Is Dark Binding again gonna go wide? And Let Me looking to try and get in to try and get some exit kills. The chains do land, but that takes off half of a shield there from the Bloodthirster. And Let Me unable to stop that back as well. Flandre able to get back to base. Clear out this wave onto the inhibitor turret. And Snake, two inhibitors down. and. They what, lose an inner turret for it? Yeah, they lost an inner in the bottom lane. So not really much they're going to care about because that's the lane they'll focus next, you feel. Oh, that's a Gromp. Flandre definitely needs to kill that. That's been alive for way too long. <laughs> and he just chunks through them so quickly. Yeah. That was 100 gold for a Gromp as well. So that's, you're getting a fair bit of bank for that one. Actually decided not to pick up any items here as well. Had picked up a, uh, at least an extra kill in that last exchange, but decides that... Just really wanted to pick up that farm and now head back and maybe finish off the next items in that Trinity Force. Actually finishes off the Trinity Force. Well, it, you have to remember that he got three turrets. Yeah, three turrets, a Baron, a kill, a yeah. Gromp, another Gromp, most likely. It's a pretty big Shivana. And I want to see how much gold he's actually managed to rack up as well because this smite has to have been doing work. Because when you're sitting on 266 CS, and you've been getting a lot of monster camps as well. That's a whole lot of extra money. Yeah, and you can see that the lane swap did nothing to stop him as a death brush comes through. Nice hook to just check it. And Crystal, wow. Oh my goodness. Tail takes half of his health from another auto from Crystal, who doesn't really want to be hitting this turret. Takes another dark passage here. Huey, he's a tanky member, but it doesn't look like it's Flandre. He's going to dragon form underneath this turret. Tail, collateral damage there as well. The dragon is going to fall down. Explosive cast gets Tail a little bit closer to the team, but death sentence there on to let me Uses the ultimate defensively here as well as Crystal completely full health. That is actually a negative trade for Snake, but you can see they've still got the pressure. Crystal waits out that exhaust, and the stander side not going to find it, just kiting back here as well. Ganty, they may have actually defended this one, but they're super creeps in their base now, and Snake have all the time in the world. Yeah, so they can just sit here and continue to poke. Doesn't really matter because, as you said, those super creeps starting to knock down Nexus turrets, so they'll just push in here, be able to take it on this wave, and now they're looking to, I guess, get busy again. Oh my goodness, Crystal actually going to flash away from Huey here as well. The Oh, that was the exhaust not going on to Jahu there, but look at the Whirling Death! Picks up a double kill, and Tail and Sync Dream needing to run away. Let Me is alive again, looking to try and get back into this fight, but doesn't have the ultimate available just yet. Both Nexus turrets dead, Tail gets destroyed, and Sync Dream may not be safe on the fountain, and isn't. Is this going to be the unofficial pentakill to come through from Crystal? No! Gets denied by the Surrender Vote, or just the dead Nexus. Not entirely sure which came through, and look at Crystal grinning. He's on his Draven again, and what a brilliant performance. Yeah, and a different build this time around. Went the Phantom Dancer. Apparently the crit changes in that item just meant it's much more attractive yeah, now. Maybe. Goes in and get, comes up absolutely huge. Crystal and Flandre, very impressive this game, but what did it for me? Beast, Baka, they were yeah. on different champions. They're starting to show more of a hand, and they picked up the win. That sends a very clear message. We're mixing it up. We're not a one-dimensional team, and we definitely mean business. Yeah, and Barker, now, you are going to have to be scared of that Azir once more. Now that we've uh, landed on this patch, able to play that champion, and that was one of his most preferred. I'm very excited to get into game two. I hope you guys are too, but we are going to have a short break. We'll be back very soon. <laughs>